Hello everyone, I'm Brophy1322 and this video serves as an update to the fastest Mercenaries DLC videos where I show the best fully upgraded Mercenaries DLC cars in terms of lap time and top speed. For all the information you need about this series, check those original videos, but otherwise, let's see where the new La Carouse and Inductor Cycle fall into that list. So to get the Inductor out of the way, basically the Inductor and the Junk Energy version are identical, it doesn't matter which one that you buy. Basically it's the same as the original Sanchez or the Barty 801 RR where the other option is basically just a different livery. The inductor itself is basically a straight copy paste of the Scorcher mountain bike in terms of handling stats with a small number of values changed and a Kerr's power boost added which is good enough to put it 3 seconds per lap slower than the race bike for lap time. It might have its moments where the Kerr's boost helps it on certain tracks but most cycle racers will still be dominated by the original race bike. In terms of top speed it would be third in the class without the Kerr's boost, 1.25 mile per hour quicker than the Scorcher, but with the Kerr's boost it climbs to being second in the class, 1.5 miles per hour slower than the race bike. So again it's basically second for life this bike in the cycles class. But now it's time for the La Carouse and it sets a remarkably good lap time of a 1 minute 0.8 seconds which allows it to sit nicely in the second tier of sports alongside the HSW Banshee and Sterling, the Pariah, Italia RSX, Imorgon, Neo, it's basically on that sort of pace. It has an off-road traction loss of 0.35 as well so it's going to be very very good off-road and easily the new quickest for unrestricted rally or rallycross races. Even without HSW it's a second per lap quicker than the previous best in that respect of the AC Sport. And it gets most of its speed from handling to be honest since like a lot of the newer electric cars it doesn't have that raw acceleration of past cars like the Neon or the Cyclone but it glides around the corners with really great traction and it has just enough acceleration to put it all together. Having said that it does probably have the biggest disparity between lap time position and top speed position with its top speed being only 114.5 miles per hour good enough for 81st place in the sports class it's kind of crazy that a car can be 7th place for lap time and 81st place for, for top speed. But what about the HSW version? I hear you screaming at your screen. How fast is that if the regular version is good enough to get a lap time that's already top tier in the sports class? Well the top tier of sports isn't what it used to be. The top tier of sports is now simply the HSW La Carouse alone. With a lap time of a scarcely believable 56.1 seconds, this thing dominates the sports class even more than the Pariah ever did in 2017 or the Elegy RH8 ever did upon release. It's 3.1 seconds per lap quicker than the previous best of the Itali GTO Stinger TT. 3.1 seconds. There's another 20 cars that are in the 3.1 second gap be behind the Stinger TT. This is all out on its own. Its lap time is quicker than every single open wheeler except the BR8, every supercar except the HSW Ignis and Cyclone 2 and it sits in 4th place overall for lap time across all cars in the entire game. The La Carouse is made by a new manufacturer, Penode, which kind of sounds like Renault, I think maybe a little bit on the nose with that one, but, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, I think this is the first time a new manufacturer has put their first car on the top of a class since Progen with the T20 topping the supercars class back in 2015. It's also the first time I'm pretty sure that an electric car sits atop any class whatsoever. Some things to remember is that this has a mode upgrade instead of a turbo which a lot of these HSW electric vehicles do. It's basically the turbo upgrade but with a name that makes somewhat you know, some sense. It doesn't have a transmission upgrade because it's an electric car. And the total cost including the HSW upgrade is $2.8 million but it does also have access to Imani Tech as well so you're going to be you know spending a decent amount of money. But this thing out handles and out accelerates everything else in the sports class by a significant margin and when it comes to the previous best of the Itali GTO Stinger TT which always handled pretty badly anyway the only thing that that car really gives you anymore, apart from buyer's remorse for anyone who dumped over four million dollars into it for it to be the best sports car for about a month, is top speed. With the La Carouse being so good off-road as well, 
there won't be any kind of nuance to off-road sports races, this is just the best car in every scenario now. We've gone from a situation where we've got multiple cars that are competitive in sports in various different situations to one overall king in every situation except pretty much a long highway race where top speed is the only thing that matters, unless you don't have HSW turned on of course. But none of this is really surprising is it? I mean Rockstar have made a habit out of this over the years, whether it was the aforementioned T20 being released a month after the new best supercar in the Osiris and then subsequently beating it, or whether it was the Emirates and Krieger releasing a few weeks after the S80RR which held the crown for supers for a short time, Rockstar have made a habit of releasing a new best car in the class that makes you spend all your money only to render it obsolete a few weeks later. They've never done it to quite this level though, at least the Osiris could compete with the T20 and the S80 could compete with the Emirates and Krieger all depending on the track. The new Itali GTO Stinger TT from the Mercenaries DLC that you would have had to spend over 4 million dollars to buy it simply can't compete anymore and nothing can in the sports class. And I think one of the worst things is that they didn't even need to do this, they simply could have given the regular version a little bit more top speed and it would have been perfectly balanced at the top of the sports class, I mean the regular version already almost is. And then they could have used the HSW upgrade to bring an older car up to that sort of same pace as well, like what we've seen with the Banshee. For example, putting an HSW upgrade on the Feltzer and making it a sub one minute car that can compete with the S95 and the Itali GTO. But beyond those first few old cars to receive HSW upgrades, like the Sterling GT and the Banshee, it's all just new cars now, rendering their non-HSW versions pretty much dead on arrival and completely forgotten about unless you're on the old gen platforms, and further exacerbating the power creep at the top of each class. None of this is new, it's just particularly apparent and frustrating now since the sports class has enjoyed a long period of incredible balance at the top with nearly 10 cars able to compete, and that's all gone now. The sports class has finally got the HSW treatment that the supers class got immediately with the weaponized Iglis and Cyclone 2 dominating the class with 55 second lap times. For the La Carouse to only be a second off that pace and quicker than every open wheel car except the BR8 is astounding. At least it's cheaper and nicer to drive than the Stinger TT, but uh, yeah, say goodbye to any kind of balance to the sports class. So that's pretty much it for this one, consider supporting on Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want testing results early, and remember to read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful, and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.